today. Today we're going to be looking at coils. And so the coil can be used in Fusion to create a spring-like object, or it could actually be used to create like an auger to move material. So both are a helix-oriented object. So when you're working with coils, it's actually pretty simple in, in Fusion itself to create a spring-shaped object. A little bit more complicated to create the auger. So let's get this started. To create a coil, we're actually just going to go under the Create and the Coil. And so this coil option, what's interesting is that you first have to pick a plane that the coil is going to set on. And then you're going to create the inside diameter of the coil. Okay, the core inside diameter. So first let's pick the plane. And then we'll pick a centering point and then the inside diameter. So if I can type this in at 1.50, it'll be an exact 1.50 for the inside diameter. Now it creates a coil, and it's got a triangular internal, but you can also have a square or a circular. So you're more apt as a spring orientation to be more circular. So you can see the blue circle, which is the 1.50. Now we can increase the height and increase the number of spacing of the coil, but we can also do it here in the dialog box. So the diameter of the coil is what we set. The number of revolutions, there are six revolutions in 1.5 inches. So from the top, excuse me, six revolutions in the 3.375 inches of the height. So if we set this down to 2.5, you can see that now it looks like the spring is compressed. We still have the six revolutions, but now it's only 2.5 inches tall. Now the diameter of the coil itself, that's the spring, uh, the spring wire diameter, is 0.375. That's pretty thick. We can make that 0.125. And now you can see that the thickness being 0.125, it actually is pretty close. Now the one thing you have to remember is that you can't get this, the section size or the diameter big enough that it's going to intersect itself on another coil. So there are some limitations in terms of what you can set this up with. But this is the simplest form of how to create the coil itself. Now you can also change the rotation of the coil. Okay, so you can have it in one, you can have it going in one direction, which in this way is counterclockwise, or you can have it go clockwise, depending upon what you're looking for. It's going to create it as a new body when we choose OK, and the coil will then be created. And we can always edit the coil. It is considered a body. And so we could edit that body. It's of course easiest to edit the body on the bottom under the coil command uh, in the history, in the command history. All right, so that's a, the simplest aspect of creating a coil itself. Now if we wanted to create a auger, which is basically a coil that cuts away into a cylinder, to create something that can move material. So an auger will create by starting with, well, we can do one of two ways. We can either start with a sketch and draw a circle and extrude it, or we can just pick a cylinder. And so if we pick the cylinder, I'm going to pick the surface, which is the bottom surface here. We'll pick the circle on the x-axis, and we'll bring this out two inches. And then we got to give it a height. So we'll drag the height up. And again, this is live in the dialog box. So 3.50. Now one of the things that I did want is to create this particular body a different color. So that way it can be um, more visually pleasing on how it's going to be cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. Right mouse click on it and choose appearance. So when you're choosing appearance, you get a list of different fusion uh, colors and capabilities and features. 
Okay, and so what I'm what I did here was I actually went down the list, chose paint, and chose glossy paint. And now they can choose any one of these glossy paint colors. So I'm gonna make it green. So we're gonna drag and drop the green on our cylinder. And we'll close it. So now we've got the green cylinder. The next thing is is creating the coil. So this is a little bit trickier because the coil is actually going to wrap around the cylinder and the cylinder if you remember had a diameter uh, let's see here how big was that cylinder diameter let's edit the feature the cylinder had a diameter of two inches and it had a height of three and a half so we're going to go ahead and create the coil again the coil has to pick a plane so I'm going to pick the bottom plane first then I'm going to pick the bottom of the circle here. Place the center point. And so it's going to be close. I could look at the bottom directly. And since I don't have any direct features, I'm just going to select it. And I believe that's the center. And it is. So I made a good selection on the center. And so we want the, the diameter to be 2 inches. Or it could actually be slightly larger than 2 inches. So let's make this 2.10. So the diameter is going to be slightly larger. Well, let's see here. Let's make the diameter smaller. Let me explain why. Remember, the diameter of the coil is the inside diameter so we want the auger to actually get cut in so we're going to need to make the diameter smaller than the 2.10 so let's go ahead and make this 1.75 now again we can adjust this as part of the coil itself all right so 1.75 hit the enter key and so now we've got a coil Okay, and so that coil is wrapped around, and you can see the inside is 1.75. You can also see that the coil is in red, which means that the operation is cut. So if we were to cut this out right now, we'd have a round circular cut being taken from the coil. If we wanted to change the diameter of the wire, we could do that here. So we can make this 0.625. And you can see that the diameter of the wire now is going to cut farther into the coil. We'll choose OK and we'll see what this looks like. And then we'll talk about how to make an auger. So you can actually see that this looks like a handle grip now. You can actually see how it creates uh, the finger locations. It's a little bit small, obviously. It's only a 3 inch distance. But you can actually control that diameter. So if you wanted to do it as a half inch or have fewer revolutions, and so if we edit the feature, we can have five revolutions and make this even thicker. And so the big thing is, is that these can't touch. So now these are th uh, 0.75, which is 3 eighths of an inch. So if you look at your fingers, they're about a half inch. So we're going to have to go about four revolutions and do one inch. Okay, too big. So let's do 0 0.9. 0 0.9 will work. We choose OK, and you can see that we have three positional holds. Let's talk a little bit about how to create that auger. So we use the round stock here, but we also know that we've got square and triangular that points external, which will create an auger to the outside. Okay, so you can have a very small interior diameter and so if we do that uh, the diameter instead of 1.75 we can make this 0.375 and that's probably going to fail only because of the section size and so now you can see how it's done a 0.375 inside and a small section inside and it'll cut it out from the middle but realistically, we're going to have to go about 1.75 to make that work. 
and we're not there yet. Okay, it's not fully cutting those out. We're gonna have to make this 0 0.50. And so now you can start to see how it's gonna cut these out. Now we could make this as a join. And if we make that as a join, you can see how we can now make an auger to the outside of the coil. Okay, so we can connect this now with the cylinder, which is kind of a cool feature. So we can control the cylinder diameter and then control this triangular size to the outside. But we can also cut to the inside. And so we're going to need to, uh, let's see here, increase and cut. So you can see that we're now on the inside here and that we would cut this. Or we could do an intersection and now we'd have the intersection of that coil and you can see that it would create a pretty cool auger that you could then put a cylinder in the middle and then you can move material with that. So those are different ways that we can create an auger but again it all starts with a coil, triangular, circular, square. Controlling the height, controlling the number of revolutions, the diameter, and whether it's going to be cut, joined, or intersection. So if we were to cut this, it'd basically create an internal coil here. Let's show you. So now we've got an internal coil that goes all the way through the part, but it doesn't do a whole lot for us. Okay, if this was glass, it would actually have a little bit of a uh, braceway all the way down to the bottom. But it doesn't accomplish our auger scenario. So to create the auger from this, it's going to have to increase the diameter a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm adjusting it how this is going to look. Let's see here, if we did intersection, what would that look like? There we go. If we do the intersection, that looks pretty sharp as an auger. But it's going to move material. Now we could also control that's uh, 2.25.75. Let's do. Let's see what that does. 0 0.50 changes the interior diameter of it. Interesting. So we just create a smaller coil. And so now if we were to use the cut, yeah, it's got to be at 2 inches to do that because that's going to choose there. We did one inch here. Too big. 0.75. Triangular. Let's do triangular internal. So now you can see how this coil will work internally. So if we choose cut and it well there it is. I'm gonna say it. I was, I was gonna say it failed, but it didn't. And so now you can see that it created a a solid filled coil. Now you want one end to be flat that you can then a attach a handle or another object to so that way you could actually use this and spin it whether that's a gear driving environment or a belt or something so that's your mechanical system but the idea is that you can control how the coil looks and acts and how sharp the edges are all within that coil command. Well have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye now.